So, then now, please give it up for Pietro Boselli. Oh, yes, yes, sir. That's good, that's good. <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, it's already given you a bit of a background. Uh, I mean, my life uh, has been like, really filled with like, very diverse things. I started working when I was uh, six or seven years old, uh, not in a sweatshop. I was a model. Um, and uh, my first job was an Armani Junior campaign in Milan. And uh, modeling has always been part of my life, and I grew up in fashion. But I was like taking it for granted. You know, I've always been very observant, but like, growing up into fashion, I never realized how much I absorbed from that world. So when I was 18, I moved to London to, to study engineering, and uh, I pursued like an academic career. Um, I did my PhD, and uh, like you said, I was a lecturer at UCL for like five years. And uh, I was going about my daily nerdy life. Um, and uh, I didn't think that the fact that I was both um, a model and an academic could have been of interest, but apparently it was. And this is how my career uh, in social media started, with uh, a few like, of my students making fan pages, uh, funnily enough. And uh, so I found myself with like, a big audience, uh, but I didn't know what to do with it. Um, and I decided to sort of combine uh, all, all of my passions, uh, so the, the design and engineering components, um, the fashion component, and the fitness. I've always been really passionate about it. I used to be a competitive swimmer and then a triathlete. I've done like, a lot of fitness competitions as well. Um, and I wanted to create something that enca would encapsulate all of this. Um, but of course, given that I'm an engineer, I wanted to have a sustainable angle to it, because in engineering, what we're trying always to do is to make the most efficient use of the resources that we have. Um, and for this precise reason, I decided to make a premium sportswear brand that would be made ethically. So right at the beginning, I had the idea, and uh, I was thinking, OK, maybe I could find some investors. And there was a lot of interest, um, especially from Chinese investors, who, however, wanted me to produce everything in China. And for me, it was very important to maintain control over my production and to have control over like, the ethics of it. So I decided to stick with just making something small uh, with no investment and like step by step. And uh, what I found out is actually that in Italy, there is an amazing amount of state-of-the-art manufacturers that produce uh, recycled yarn. Uh, even f uh, yarn that historically has been very challenging, such as nylon, um, and uh, obviously the, the classic recycled uh, PET. Um, the challenge for you know, like a, a small startup like mine uh, was that it's, very actually, it's actually very difficult to get these textile manufacturers to actually respond to you. <laughs> because you, know, you, you don't exist, you're not in the radar. So I just like, started making like, the first collection. And then based on that, I now had a brand. And I decided to start requesting from these manufacturers that they would produce the kind of, text, the, the kind of textile that I needed. Um, and Sportswear actually lends itself particularly well to um, be sustainable because most of the sportswear is made of synthetic fibers, such as polyester or polyamide. Polyester is the same molecule as uh, the PET bottles, so uh, polyethylene terephthalate, and then uh, polyamide, polyamide is just nylon. Nylon historically has been very difficult to recycle, but now there are actually manufacturers that can recycle nylon from existing nylons. So for example, um, fishing nets, which currently account for 46% of ocean plastic pollution. It's just abandoned fishing gear, which eventually disintegrates in the ocean. So it's very important to obviously create consumer, consumer awareness um, in terms of you know, recycling and so on. But as a business, I feel like it's very important to create a market for recycled products. Um, and so the strategy was to create a uh, brand that was perceived as really high fashion. Um, and that was like, you know, the advantage they had is all the connection I had in fashion, the photographers, the models, and so on, to create that image. Um, because people want to buy a product that is cool. They want to feel good, they want to look good. And obviously, the second layer of the narrative has to be that it's sustainable. Um, 
because the point here is to shift the perception of uh, the recycled uh, products, uh, which historically has been perceived as a lower quality product, but obviously is not uh, as such anymore because you have the technology. Actually, the technology for recycling plastic existed for a long time, but currently is very expensive compared to using virgin petroleum. So this is why it's important to create a market, a market for recycled products that will eventually drive down the cost of recycling as opposed to using virgin petroleum, and then shift in the consumer perception uh, so that the recycled products are actually perceived as high quality. Um, the other aspect of what I wanted to talk about is um, how you promote such a brand starting from zero. Um, the first idea that I had was obviously I had a big reach on social media, and I thought, you know, that might actually help. But in fact, um, it's not like that at all. Um, the classic influencer uh, marketing strategy or uh, the classic strategy for an influencer to sell something uh, online is merchandise. And this is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to create an actual fashion brand, an actual ethically made product that would be independently perceived as high quality. So when people shop for high quality, they shop product first. They don't care about who made it. So the biggest, obviously, fashion names started off by you know, proposing to the market a high quality product. Eventually their name got associated with a high quality product. When you start off with uh, already an audience, you have to sort of separate the two things. So I, this is why I didn't call my brand with my own name, because I wanted to create an independent body that would be eventually perceived as high quality. And I think this is actually a challenge because obviously um, right now my brand is obviously highly associated with, you know, my you know, my figure, and eventually uh, it's difficult to convert and do the next step where people see it as an independent thing.